This is Mac OS Ken. More double plus good data for iPhone, weighing a possible Apple challenge to the recent union vote, and so darn much Apple TV Plus news. It is Friday, the 24th of June, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Notion. One workspace for your whole team. Learn more and get started for free at Notion.com slash macOSCan. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at Patreon.com slash macOSCan. After saying Wednesday that models of iPhone made up five of the top ten global smartphone shipments in April, CounterPoint Research is out with more numbers showing iPhone crushing the smartphone space. Apple Insider highlights CounterPoint's newest numbers. According to those, iPhone took 62% of the worldwide market for premium smartphones. Those are phones costing more than $400 in the first quarter of 22. That was the Jesus Phone's highest first quarter share since 2017, according to the firm. It also represented year-over-year growth for Apple in the segment. Last year, Apple's first quarter plus $400 share of the global smartphone market was 57%. This year, it moved higher. All of that as the premium smartphone market shrank 8% year-over-year. While iPhones took up half the air on the global top 10 list, they left next to no room for anything else in the over 400 top 5. Running those down, iPhone 13 was first with a 23% share of the market. iPhone 13 Pro Max was second with a 13% share. iPhone 13 Pro was third with 9%. iPhone 12 fourth with 8% and Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra 5G squeezed into the top five with a market share of 3%. And you say, with a name as catchy as Galaxy S22 Ultra 5G, how did it do so poorly? You know, people can be really annoying. Lots of people. People who stand too close to you at the grocery store. People who kick the back of your seat on a plane or train. Lots of people can be really annoying. Today, though, I'm talking specifically about Bernstein research analyst Tony Sakanagi and whoever wrote the piece for Seeking Alpha about Bernstein research analyst Tony Sakanagi. Well, whoever wrote the headline, Apple rises as Bernstein says stock could outperform over next few months, citing history, says the headline. Yeah, everything I follow in the States was up yesterday. I don't think Apple did that by itself, and I certainly don't think Sakanagi talking about Apple created that kind of ripple. Just stop already. On now to Mr. Sakanagi. The analyst has a market perform rating on Apple's shares, and yet he thinks Apple's shares will outperform the market for the next three months, just as they've done for 14 of the past 15 years. Not these July, August, and September months specifically. Rather, he's referring to the three months ahead of an anticipated iPhone release. Those used to be in June or July. Now they're not, hence my saying, not these three months specifically. According to Seeking Alpha, with the company likely to announce an iPhone 14 in September, Sakanagi notes there is some opportunity for Apple to potentially outperform modestly over the next few months per its historical pattern, but the analyst added that the risk-reward over the next six months to two years is neutral to modestly negative. What's annoying is not only does he continue to discount anything Apple does except iPhone, He issued a note earlier this week that seemed to indicate rough sledding for iPhone this year, hashtag in this economy. He must be given props on one thing, though, consistency. And I'm not kidding about that. All he can see is iPhone. While history tells him that Apple shares are likely to pop headed into the next iPhone, he's not day trading. He's advising for the long term. Of course, he's also been wildly wrong about Apple for years, but, you know, he's consistent. As mentioned before, Sakanagi has a market perform rating on Apple's shares, 
His price target on the shares is 170 bucks. It seems that Apple can still challenge the union vote that passed recently at one of its stores. Last weekend, employees at Apple Towson Town Center in Maryland opted to form a union. Now a piece from Yahoo Finance says the Cupertino company has until today, Friday the 24th of June, to challenge the vote, though it sounds like experts speaking to the site would advise against it. The problem seems to be the margin. Too big. In favor. The final vote tally showed 65 of the store's 112 eligible workers in favor of unionization and 33 against, according to the report. Cornell professor and labor expert Eileen DeVault says fighting those numbers would not look good for Apple. Not that they won't try. As Yahoo Finance points out, most losing employers do. Still, Michael Oswald, labor lawyer and law professor at Wayne State Law School, tells the site, I would hope that after a multi-week campaign where Apple had a chance to express its views to its employees in one-on-one, group, and large settings at any and all times during the workday, the company would recognize that its workers are in favor of collective bargaining and respect that decision by negotiating a contract. Not that everyone's in agreement. The piece has Michael Duff, a professor at University of Wyoming College of Law, saying challenging the union vote still makes business sense for Apple. He tells Yahoo Finance that while the National Labor Relations Board can order Apple to take a specific action, there's nothing to actually enforce the order except for rulings from a court. That would, of course, take time, and any ruling Apple doesn't like, they could simply appeal. Meanwhile, challenges lead to delays, and delays often frustrate workers enough that they give up on the whole union idea. All of that said, Duff figures the current labor shortage might keep Apple from standing in the proposed union's way. As for what Apple will do, a short amount of time will tell. When reached by Yahoo Finance, Apple declined to comment on whether it would challenge the outcome. More news in a moment, but first a word from Notion, one workspace for your whole team. Not all work collaboration tools are created equal. Some help you organize your company's information, others let you manage projects together. Notion does both. It is one tool for your whole team to do it all. With powerful integrations and seamless navigation, you'll have everything you need in one spot so you can make speed your advantage without the silos and context switching that can slow companies down. And here's my favorite part. Notion has a worldwide network of millions of users creating templates, tutorials, and new inspiration. They are sharing what they have learned, which should make your experience even better. Learn more and get started for free at Notion.com slash macOS Ken. That's Notion.com slash macOS Ken to help you take the first step toward an organized, happier team today. N-O-T-I-O-N. That's Notion.com slash macOS Ken. If you're a fan of the sports ball, Apple TV Plus has posted its schedule for Friday Night Baseball for the merry, merry month of July. That schedule is posted now on macOSCan.com. Apple TV Plus has signed another big TV and movie type to an overall deal. Variety says the Cupertino streamer has signed a multi-year agreement with Mimi Leader. This is a solid get. Leader has directed such films as On the Basis of Sex, The Peacemaker, and Pay It Forward. She's directed on such TV series as The Leftovers, Shameless, Nashville, and The West Wing. Really, though, we probably could have started and stopped with The Morning Show. Leader has directed a few episodes of that and serves as one of the executive producers for the Apple flagship drama. Variety says the new deal gives Apple a first look on streaming features, as well as an exclusive deal for series developed by Leader. She joins an impressive group sporting Apple overalls, 
including co-director Sean Hader, activist Malala Yousafzai, John Stewart, Idris Alba, Alfonso Cuaron, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and the list goes on. In a desperate play to capture the young, hip, teenage viewing public, Apple TV Plus is making a series based on the final novel written by Edith Wharton. So transparent. The Cupertino streamer issued a press release Thursday announcing an eight-episode series order for the show. Though it currently has no title, it'll be based on the Pulitzer Prize-winning author's unfinished final novel, The Buccaneers. Describing the story, Apple says, Girls with money, men with power, new money, old secrets. A group of fun-loving young American girls explode into the tightly corseted London season of the 1870s, kicking off an Anglo-American culture clash as the land of the stiff upper lip is infiltrated by a refreshing disregard for centuries of tradition. Sent to secure husbands and titles, the buccaneers' hearts are set on much more than that, and saying I do is just the beginning. Now, I've only read a few novels by Wharton, though I am a big fan. Ethan Frome is wonderful, though needlessly tragic, and The Age of Innocence, also wonderful, though also needlessly tragic. And the novella False Dawn, so wonderful, and... You know, I'm starting to sense a theme. No word on when the series will premiere, though the press release says it is already in production, and I gotta say, period piece like this one, I am really looking forward to seeing the Buckin costumes. Like their big Buckin hats. And finally today, one of Apple's earliest comedies is giving it another go... The Cupertino company issued a press release Thursday teasing the third season of Trying. That's the one about the couple in the UK who were first trying to have a baby, then trying to adopt. Having successfully adopted, it seems, they are now trying to be parents. While the show's return is still about a month away, Apple has pushed out a trailer for the upcoming season. Seasons 1 and 2 of Trying are available to stream now on Apple TV+. Plus. The first two episodes of the third season hit on Friday, the 22nd of July. Between now and then, you can catch the season three trailer on YouTube. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Notion, one workspace for your whole team. Learn more and get started for free at notion.com slash Mac OS can. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOS can. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.